Okay, here's 6.6 .6 inequalities in two triangles. Last section was in one triangle, now we have in two triangles. And we start off with the hinge theorem. Okay, and this says that if two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides in another triangle, so that's just saying I've got like my SS um, situation, right? Like I have in this diagram, okay. And the included angle in the first triangle included between those two congruent sides, so this angle, if the, if the um, included angle in the first triangle is larger, it means then, then the included one in the second triangle, then the third side of the first triangle is going to be larger as well. Okay, so both of these blanks are larger. Okay, so it's, this paragraph is a, a bit of a, uh, it's a lot to digest, but this hinge theorem is actually a lot simpler when we look at it in, um, in use. So I'm going to try to re-explain this um, just with this picture, okay? So we need to have this SS situation. So um, think of a hinge on a door, right? A hinge that opens and closes a door. So um, your hinge is always going to be where the two, um, where the two marked sides, the two um, sets of of congruent sides meet, okay? So this is my hinge in the first one, and this is the hinge in the second one, okay? And all the hinge theorem says that we can tell which door is open wider, right? Well, since this is 61 degrees, and that's just 60 degrees, that means that this one is open wider. So since this one is open wider, that means segment AC is going to be longer than DEF because this is closed more and it's the same door um, so that means, you know, this one's larger than that one. So I can say AC is going to be greater than DF. That is the thin hinge theorem, okay? And we can use this in reverse as well, okay? So the converse of the hinge theorem, we still got the same situation where we've got two pairs of congruent sides. And we can tell which of these doors is open wider. We don't know the angles, but we can see, oh, that's accommodating for a six. This one's just accommodating for a five. So that means this one must be open wider, right? Since six is greater than five, that means angle E, the measure of angle E is going to be greater than the measure of angle B. Okay, so just two different ways to figure out which door is open wider, either with the angles, if you're using the original hinge theorem or with the uh, third side if you're using the converse, okay? All right, so let's try this out. Complete the inequality. So um, what I want to do, I guess you could say these are equal as well, um, but they're not. So let's figure out which of these two, um, I'm just going to put a symbol in there is what I was trying to say, either greater than or less than um, or equal or something like that, okay? So our hinge in this picture is right there and there. And, you, you know, you might be able to go based on looks, but again, I, nothing's measured here. These I made these drawings um, on my computer without measuring anything. I want to go with the given info. Don't assume that these are to scale. So I wouldn't want to measure these with the protractor or just eyeball. But what I can do is look, well, hey, 10 is greater than 8. So that means that this hinge is open wider. So that means that F, the measure of angle F is greater than the measure of angle C, or you could say angle C is less than angle F. And there is my answer. And then the explanation, oh, so I'm not going to write out a paragraph here, but I do want to identify, am I using the hinge theorem or its converse? Well, I figured this out using the third side. I didn't know the angle measures, right? So that means I'm using the... Um, the converse, right? It's this situation as opposed to the original situation. So this is the converse of the hinge theorem. And very simple explanation, just really identifying what theorem I'm using. There it is, okay? All right, let's move on to the next page. Okay, there's only one, one more problem here, pretty short little section. Write an inequality and solve it to find the possible x values. Okay, so all that's really in this section is the, um, the hinge theorem and its converse. So I'm thinking I'm going to use the hinge theorem or its converse. Okay, so let's find our hinge. 
So I've got one set of congruent sides. Shoot, that's not enough. I need two. So I'm stuck. I, I guess I, I better give up. No solution. Wait a second. This segment is in both triangles. Oh, hang on. I do indeed have a hinge because I could use the reflexive property of congruence to say that that is congruent to itself. Now I've got myself a hinge here and a hinge here. Okay, and now what I want to do is figure out which of those hinges is, is open wider. And um, I'm just looking for at the, the two uh, angle measures because I've got them. So hey, 88 is greater than 87. That means this hinge is open wider. So then I know 3x plus 2 should be greater than x plus 6. Okay. Now, there is an inequality, so I have written an inequality, um, but it's not very um, tidy. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit. And I'm going to, you can solve this really. Get the, that means we're just going to isolate the x um, so that it's easier to, to read and um, makes more sense. Okay. And it's going to work just like solving an equation. The only thing you might want to, well, you do want to watch out for. If you ever have to multiply or divide the whole equation by a negative number, then you'd have to flip the inequality symbol. Okay? So watch out for that. If you multiply everything by, so I'm not multiplying here, I'm just subtracting x. So I don't have to do that now. And then I'm going to subtract 2. So still not multiplying or dividing by a negative. And then I'm going to divide by positive 2, so I still don't have to flip it. But there are different ways you could have solved this. And just a heads up. Um, okay, And now I can see, hey, my possible x values, x can be anything greater than 2. Okay, And you could actually test it out. So 2 itself would not work, but if I tried 2.1 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6, anything else should make sense where we get an x value where we, we, this line segment ends up being greater than this one. Okay, and that's the end of the section. I will see you next time.